Everybody take a look at this. We have got quite the vacation paradise. Inspiration Lake Artificial Waterfall. Inspiration Lake Pavilions. The Sunny Bay Promenade. And if we turn here, you'll see, what's that? The beautiful Hong Kong Disneyland, including Main Street USA, the castle, Fantasyland. Oh, is that Mystic Manor? And we have hotels right along Discovery Bay. But if we just turn and take a look at what is now connected to Hong Kong Disneyland's parking lot, we'll see, that's right, something very scary. And it's even more scary if you live in China and come down with uh, the virus known as COVID because the no COVID policy means that you may be traveling here to one of China's not so luxurious, well, it's called the isolation camp phase four. But in reality, this is a quarantine prison. We refer to it as a prison because it's involuntary. And one of the scary things about this is that once you've built something such as this, perhaps in the future, it will not always be just for medical reasons, although those are a little bit ludicrous at this point anyway. Hmm. But one day, this could be something worse. Once the virus that China is uh, concerned about goes away, what does this become? Well, one thing's for sure, it's going to stay right here next to Hong Kong Disneyland, right across from Mickey's house, just across from the parking lot, connected to Disney infrastructure. It is a medical prison now in Hong Kong. Joining us today for this uh, video, which has a slightly unpleasant topic, I would say, perhaps is an understatement, but we've got Vash Sky. Uh, Mr. Dre is here with us today to share with us the history of Hong Kong Disneyland how this came to be, how it is that we now have a Disney park that is literally connected to an involuntary quarantine prison. Uh, Vash, welcome aboard. I wish we were doing a more sunny topic today, but uh, you know, Disney parks are beautiful and wonderful in many ways, so they're worth talking about. In, in most regards, we get to discuss fun things like the world of colors, or we talk about little kids watching parades go in, uh, towards the castle and fireworks and those those things that keep us loving Disney right. parks and for them to be better. This is not one of those topics. So run us through real quick. How did we get here? When did Hong Kong Disneyland start and and how did we land on this uh, little area here? I'll show everybody across the bay is the city of Hong Kong. You can see right over here. And here's Hong Kong Disneyland sitting out on the peninsula. Take right. it away. Yes, uh, this uh, this is Lantau Island, uh, interestingly enough. Uh, so it's a little, 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 little farther from uh, Hong Kong uh, 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 proper, as you as you illustrated right there, on a little little island. But it's it's it's, it's right there. And uh, what's interesting about this whole story is, well, uh, how it all kind of develops back in 1997 when the last vestiges of the British Empire actually annexed uh, Hong Kong and relinquished control over to the uh, Chinese Communist Party. Uh, there was some uh, worry amongst the people there that they would be incorporating not only um, uh, not not be reincorporating just into uh, mainland China, but also to the uh, governmental system of China, uh, obviously, but the uh, Chinese Communist Party was quickly quick to point out that Hong Kong would retain its own system of governments. It, in fact, it would be two systems, one country, right? And, and that was so, enough to uh, the Disney leadership to build a massive, nearly thousand square acre expansion, a new, uh, a new theme park resort here, correct? Uh, Exactly. Uh, Bob Iger at the time had made had been made president of Walt Disney International. His job was to find uh, new uh, places where the company could expand its theme park presence and new countries. And uh, one of those, obviously, uh, under consideration was China. And through this kind of new, uh, 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 you know, British annexation of this region, uh, it, I believe Bob Iger and a few other Disney executives found that China was uh, a perfect destination uh, for a new theme park. E e uh, with the, you know, uh, obviously the, uh, you know, uh, hanging over them was the uh, uh, Chinese communist inf influence, but uh, Hong Kong being removed as it was and under this kind of a, a one country, two systems uh, uh, leadership, they, I believe they viewed Hong Kong as, as the perfect place for it. And I believe Hong Kong was the stepping stone to bigger things and bigger relationships that uh, Disney and China would establish. Uh, I believe that was Bob Iger's grand vision for this. But 
at the 2003 groundbreaking ceremony for this uh, whole ordeal right there. Who's over Michael Eisen's shoulder, putting in the put uh, putting in the shovel in the ground? Well, it's Jay Rossulo, president of uh, Disney Parks, and also. Bob Iger, he is right there, and he is kind of the central figure uh, uh, revolving around this kind of uh, Chinese-Disney relationship here. Now, you bring up a fantastic point, and one that many people do not know. When we talk about Hong Kong Disneyland, many times people will hang this sort of around the shoulders of Michael Eisner, and they will think that because he was the CEO at the time, he was sort of operating in a vacuum. But that's yes. not true. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, Robert Iger and what he was doing at this time? And, and for those of you not aware, uh, Robert Iger is back in charge as the new CEO of the Walt Disney Company again after vacating the spot for essentially only 11 months. So what was he up to back when uh, this park was being built and then launched? Well, at the uh, at this time, he was made the uh, president of Walt Disney International. So uh, one year after uh, the uh, British Empire uh, annexes this region right here, uh, in 1998, uh, the Disney company announces that they are uh, planning on a new resort for Hong Kong. Uh, a deal is made with the Chinese, uh, with, I'm sorry, Hong Kong government officials at that time. That changes later, of course. Um, and uh, the deal is finalized in 2000. So um, also at this time... Uh, Bob Iger is touring around areas of Shanghai before uh, settling on the Pudong district of Shanghai uh, for uh, for a new theme park project there. But uh, he is making moves and he is really kind of uh, uh, make, making establishing new relationships uh, with both the Hong Kong government at that time and the Chinese government as well. You know, the image we're looking at right now is uh, a little bit dystopian because of the juxtaposition. Yes. Here we have the promenade that you go into as you're preparing to enter into Hong Kong Disneyland's, well, it's the only theme park they have, uh, although there were plans for another. There but was. Beyond that tree line is a quarantine prison, which one day may be worse than that. Uh, so you've got all this joy and happiness here, and then you just uh, turn around. If you could just see past the trees, if you could just see past the trees, it's, it's people that they can't leave. They're stuck. And uh, it's been an odd response from the, uh, the, the country of China and how they have handled different situations with the pandemic on a lot of fronts. But in this case, specifically that they're imprisoning people right across from Hong Kong Disneyland. Now, tell us uh, briefly. Yes. So you've got this massive area here. Um, what, what was this supposed to be? It, it's clearly using Disney's own infrastructure to connect to it. I mean, this road is part of Disney's infrastructure to the parking lot. It's not It's not a public access road. It's used for parking and transit to the park. And then boom, here it is connected now to uh, something that's, that's gravely different. Correct. Uh, that was the original site of the second gate that was... Uh, supposed to be part of the Hong Kong Disneyland Resort project. Um, uh, originally, it was supposed to have six resort hotels. It was supposed to have two theme parks. It was supposed to have a, a long retail dining entertainment complex. And uh, uh, However, uh, Disney didn't actually buy the land that was connected to Hong Kong Disneyland outright initially. Um, the deal was that for the length of about 20 years, they would have exclusive rights to actually buy this land for a fixed rate of $361 million whenever they so choose. Um, with the um, um, understanding that uh, after those 20 years were actually up, there would be two five-year renewals if the Chinese government actually opted to do that, in which uh, Disney could still uh, um, uh, buy this uh, plot of land out. In September of 2020, recently, um, that that uh, the first 20 years was up. So Disney rolled the dice, and they said, well, we'll opt in for this extension clause, and China... Well, they didn't agree to it, and they have now uh, denied Disney access to this land and have actually taken it for themselves. You know, it's, uh, it's something remarkable because that may actually be, if you, th if you get in the mind of the CCP and what they do, mm. that could be the symbolism they want to give to the Walt Disney Company to say, here's what can happen if you mess with us. Don't mess with Correct. us. Uh, Shanghai Disney is not safe either. Vash, where can people follow you? Uh, people can uh, follow me at uh, OrangeGo55 on YouTube. Uh, just go ahead and type that in. It should pop up. And you can also follow me here on Twitter at VashSky. Uh, also, uh, also will be present. I will say, one last note here, Hong Kong Disneyland, uh, the expansion options are severely limited. So uh, Disney's going to have to make a decision here and quickly. 
All right. Thank you for that. Everybody keep following along. Vash Sky with great info on all the Disney parks.